Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Listen to me, you got your shot. Shut up. Shut up. Her daughter is 13. Do you hate your mother? Yes. Do I ever want to go home? No, mom. You're not home. And out of control. She grabbed the knife and was threatening to kill me. I do not remember that. You, you don't remember banging her head against the sliding glass door? I didn't touch her. One of you's lying. What would you do if you had a 13-year-old daughter and she punched her brother in the face? What if she grabbed you by your mouth and chin and slammed your head into the refrigerator? What if she pulled a knife and held it to your throat and threatened, I am going to kill you? Well, today we're going to meet this teen terror and her mom who says she has completely lost control of her daughter. And she just says, frankly, I, uh, she says, I'm out of options. Listen to, to me, you idiot. Shut up. Talk. Shut up. Do I ever Talk. want to go home? No, Mom. You are not home. Do you not see the Do you not see the You put me through. You're not being stupid. Monica says she's so fed up that she would surrender Micaiah to child services. She said, so I'd just give her up if I thought it would help. My 13-year-old daughter, Mikaya, is out of control. She is very hateful to me. I do not like you. I can feel that. Do I know you don't. Mikaya tells me that she hates me, that I'm stupid. She calls me a When I'm pissed off and in my room punching the down on my wall, you should not come in there. Mikaya has been arrested twice for third degree assault for assaulting me. The first time Mikaya was arrested, she bit me on the inside of my bicep. Over the last several years, the police have been called to our home about 17 times. Mikaya is a master at manipulating people. I've seen her manipulate the police, doctors, teachers. She was suspended the first part of her seventh grade year. She was caught with tobacco. She's punched a hole in her wall. The hole didn't start out this big. It was one fist size. But over the last several weeks, it has gotten increasingly bigger and bigger. She has been taken to the emergency room numerous times. She's been in juvenile detention center twice. She spent 30 days in an inpatient residential care. And she was placed in a foster home for four months. The last year, Micaiah has run away from home six to seven times. Micaiah has total control over me and my family. When she is gone, it's more peaceful. You piss me off. You piss me off so much that I can't even be in the same house as you. I fear the choices that Micaiah is doing right now will destroy her life and that she may end up dead. Well, Monica's ex-husband, Cliff, the bio father of this child, is listening to the show by phone because there's an order of protection in place. Uh, we won't hear from Cliff until later when I can speak to him privately. But first, I want to talk to Micaiah's mother, Monica. Now, Monica, I'm going to ask you some questions that I think only a mother can give me insight to. See, I think everybody has a way of being in the world. Why is your daughter choosing this way? Well, part of the reason I'm here is to find that out, because I don't know why she's choosing, this, choosing to be this way. But I think it, it works for her to some extent. She doesn't feel like I love her. She honestly feels like I don't love her. Um, mm -hmm. She feels like I favor my other three children over her. Do you? I do not. How do you react to her when she gets upset? I try not to show any kind of reaction to her that she's, that she's causing me, <clears throat> you know, that she's causing me to get angry, to get upset, or anything like that. I just try and remain kind of level. I just heard a key word there. You said, I try. If you have ownership in why this girl is doing what she's doing, why she is running so hard, why she is so angry, you need to own it and tell me what it is because you don't want to waste your time with me digging out of you what you already know to be true. What are you doing to screw this up? I don't know. Well, let me tell you what she says you're doing to screw okay. it up. Okay. She says you're two-faced and she absolutely hates you. She says that you've told her you're acting just like your dad. Mm -hmm. True or false? That is true. 
But I asked you just a few minutes ago, what is it you're doing that's contributing to her maladaptive behavior, her lack of adjustment into this family and into this life? He said, I've got no idea. Well, you've said I would turn her over to Child Protective Services if I could. If I thought it'd help, yeah, take her. What Go I, with her. That's not what a kid wants to hear. You act just like your dad, who, by the way, you're divorced from. So that's not a ringing endorsement. She says you yell that it's always her fault. She says that you hit and slap her in the face. True or false? False. Never hit her? No. Okay. She says that you put her on meds that don't fit. She's thrown a chair and that you've choked her. Not true. Tells her every day, not occasionally, but every day, I wish I had never had you. Never said that. Those words have never come out of my mouth. She said, during big fights, you say, I so wish I had had an abortion. <sighs> never said that. All right, Monica says last year, her daughter was handcuffed and charged with third-degree assault after Micaiah threatened her life. Take a look at this. Micaiah's aggression towards me has gotten so bad that she threatened to kill me with a bread knife. She had got suspended from school for having tobacco in her backpack and had tried to blame her sister and her brother for it being theirs. She was mad that her brother had said no, it wasn't his, and so she kicked him in the groin. And I got between the two of them to break the fight up. She pulled out this knife and held it up to me and she told me she was going to kill me. She grabbed me and she was holding the knife and she was going to kill me, bitch, is what she said to me. My 11-year-old son then had to call 911. 911, what's the emergency? She's grabbing a knife and she's trying to hurt my mom. <laughs> Is that Michaela doing all the screaming? She was arrested for third degree assault once again. Monica says her 13-year-old daughter, Micaiah, is so out of control, she needed help to get her to the show. We sent a team of professional transporters to Monica's home to help bring her here. Were they successful? Well, let's take a look. Monica? Yes. And then Victor Lopez. Nice to meet you. This is my partner. Lonnie Mom. Vasquez. Hi, Lonnie. Hi, how are you? Come on in. I, I can't control her. She's running away. Verbally abusive, physically abusive. We're here to take it from point A to point B. Save me. Hi. Hi, Mikaia. How are you? Good. Did you get my message? Yeah. You know, Connie really wants you to babysit, so. When? Tonight, like mm, about 6 o'clock. I've got butterflies in my stomach. I'm really nervous about it. My brother Ryan and sister-in-law, they're going to pick her up and bring her here. So when they pull up, we'll be in the suburban. Once they pull up, we will pull up right behind them. I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know whether she'll be kicking and screaming and swearing. Basically, we expect the worst. All right, she already gave us a three-minute signal. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Next, did she put up a fight? Did she take off running? Did she make it to the show? Or is it going to be just me and mom trying to solve their problems? Find out when we come back. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. messages that Micaiah has sent me have been horrible. She's told me to f that I'm a f that I'm crazy, that I don't love her. It's very, very hurtful. Well, Monica says her daughter Micaiah ran away from home two weeks ago, so she was worried about getting her to the show by herself. So we sent professional transporters to help Monica get her daughter here safely. Didn't want any drama, wanted everything safe. Take a look. Hi, Mikaia. I want to introduce you to some people that are going to help you. Oh, this kid. is Victor, and this is Lonnie. I'm going to have to ask you for your cell phone. Why? And we'll explain everything once you get in the vehicle. We can do this the easy way, we can do this the hard way. Yeah. Thank you. 
Where are you taking me? I'll let you know once you're in the car. You try to run, we're gonna have to chase you down. And then he has handcuffs. I'm not gonna run where would I go? I have no place to go. I'm just pretty pissed off. Uh, you know what? I don't blame you. What was the first thing, like, you realized, man, I, I did not like my mom. What happened? Um, when she took us away from our dad, then she took me into a mental hospital and put me on, like, a lot of drugs. As I'm seeing them drive off, I'm worried, I'm scared. I am starting to feel a little bit, I don't know if relief is the right word. It's been a really emotional day. Well, she's made it. Transporters Victor and Lonnie have been with her every step of the way, uh, ensuring her safety and well-being. So, Micaiah, come on out. Okay, your mother um, is saying that the things that you're saying that she has said to you, done to you, uh, the ways in which she engaged you are just simply not true. So one of you's lying. The truth is that she has said this to me. Every single day I hear it that she wished she never had me. And when we get into big fights, she tells me that she wished she would have had an abortion. Mm -hmm. So your mother's lying to me. Correct. Why would she do that? Because, like, like <clears throat> I told you when I was on the phone, she is two-faced. She only acts, what's it called, appropriate around me when there is authority around. So if somebody's around that could impact her life or judge her in some way or create havoc for her, then she puts on a goody two-shoes face and behaves differently. Correct. Uh-huh. And um, how about the things that we were describing with regard to you about pulling a knife and threatening to hurt people and saying hurtful things? What about that? Well, she told me that I pulled a knife on her. I do not recall pulling a knife on her. But what do you mean you don't remember? I, I, I don't remember. I remember because we were in the kitchen, she threw the chair on my legs, and then I was walking across the room to my back door to leave the house, which is when she tackled me on the floor, which is when her hand was around my neck, and then my younger brother was kicking my head, and I, like, passed out. I just remember waking up, and the cops were there, and I was in handcuffs. Uh -huh. Why was your younger brother kicking your head? Because I was biting my mom's arm because I couldn't breathe. And why couldn't you breathe? Because my mom's arm was around my neck. She was choking you? Correct. Did that happen? There were parts of it that um, I would agree on with. Were you on the floor with your daughter with your arm around her neck? I was on the floor with my daughter holding her arms and legs so that she <clears> wouldn't <throat> hurt me, herself, or anybody else. Okay, what, what, what happened that triggered th this where you had... You had to do a takedown and restrain her. Um, she had uh, grabbed the knife and was threatening to kill me. Mm -hmm. But you don't remember pulling the knife? Correct. I do not remember that. And you don't remember banging her head against the sliding glass door? I didn't touch her. She touched me. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that Micaiah said she never wanted to speak to her mom again, she had a lot to say once they arrived in Los Angeles. Take a look. Why is it come to this point that you have to take me out of my house to drive me all the way to L.A.? I've tried everything else that I know to do By to try and to help you. By taking me to mental hospital and put me on medication, I was working hard to get to a place where I could be stable and not want to kill myself every single night. I understand that. No, you don't understand that, Mom. No, Mom, listen to me. Listen to me. Do you ever go to your room at night and cry and cut? No. Do you? No. 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 Did your mom tell you that she hated you? No. Do you have a giant hole in your wall because you get so pissed off that you don't know what to do? No. Then you have never been through what I have went through. Therefore, you will never understand what I'm going through. Therefore, you will never understand me. That's why I'm trying to you know find nothing that about out. Me. You know my best friend. No. Do you know anything about me? No. But I do I not want to talk to you that. because I do not like you. I can I can feel that. Do I know you don't. Do you understand that? I don't understand that, and I'm exactly, trying to understand that. Exactly, because you will that. never understand that. Do you think that I really need medication? I I don't know. I, I'm thinking that medication I think you're full might. Of so shut up. 
I do not like you. I hate you, Mom. I've heard Get you that say that. through your head. And, and where you've been staying with Emily, that's a better situation? Obviously. Have I left? No. You're just pissed off because she can still be a better mother to me than you can ever be. Do I ever want to go home? No, Mom. You're not home. Emily is my home. Emily is my mother. Not you. Do you hate your mother? Yes. Why? Because of everything that she has put me through. I have been through hospitals, therapists that have not helped me, medication that have left me in my bathroom wanting to kill myself. Have you attempted to kill yourself? Yes. Five times? More than that. Well, you've been hospitalized for it five times. Correct. You understand that your behavior means that somebody has to do something to protect you from yourself. But the thing was, my behavior wasn't like that until I went to the hospitals. Until the first time I went to the hospital, I came out, I was then not Why did same. you wind up in the hospital? Because my mom took, took me there because she didn't want me around the house. So she just thought, you know, it's just too crowded here, I'm going to take her to the hospital. Pretty much. Now, you don't believe that. I do, honestly. You, you have no ownership in it whatsoever. Correct. Okay, uh, Micaiah says her mom ruined her life by keeping her away from her father. We're going to find out what he has to say about all this when we come back. Can I go and live with my dad? I want to know why I cannot go and live with my dad. She took me away from my dad. He's always been there for me when my mom hasn't. Here's a picture of our family when Micaiah was only three. And at some point, Micaiah has cut me out of the picture. She's angry at me, and she doesn't want me in there. It's really, really sad. Monica says her 13-year-old daughter, Micaiah, has assaulted her twice, pulled a knife on her, shoved her, bitten her, bullied her siblings, and now wants nothing to do with her. Monica says Micaiah's bad behavior spiraled out of control when her marriage went south. My ex-husband and I separated five years ago. I think that that has had an impact on Micaiah's behavior. Can I go and live with my dad? I want to know why I cannot go and live with my dad. Because the, your dad hasn't done the necessary things. Micaiah was close with her dad prior to the separation. Micaiah was definitely her dad's favorite child, and they spent a lot of time together, just the two of them. She took me away from my dad. My dad was like the biggest role model in my life. He's always pushed me to do my best. He's always been there for me when my mom hasn't. You say all of this really upsets you, what she's saying now about all this. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Number one, her dad has not been involved in her life since really 2009. And in um, 2011, he was, um, he could only have supervised visits with the kids. And then in 2012, that changed to therapeutic supervised visits with the children. He's been kicked out of three different um, institutions that's, that, that oversee these supervised visits. Furthermore, when he had those super when he did have visits set up there were many many times where the other three kids would go and Micaiah didn't want to go because she didn't want to see her dad I refused to see my dad for like was it like about a year mm -hmm. but that was because the the what's it, therapist that my mom was making me see at the time she told me not to okay, so why is he under a protective order where I can't even talk to him with you two here um, he's under, there's a protection order in place with me because of domestic violence. So what do you want? What do I want? Mm -hmm. I want to be happy. I want this to be resolved. I do not want to go home with my mom. And where would you live over the next couple of years? Uh, like for now, I want to live with Emily, which is who I've been staying with. And who is that? My best friend's mom. Have you done anything maladaptive there? No. Hmm. You don't hmm. steal, fight, tear okay. stuff up. Do drugs. Run away, do drugs. I don't do drugs. drugs in her house. No, she does not know that I do drugs. Well, she does now. Does she know yeah. you drink? <laughs> what? Does she know you drink? No, that's, that's a drug. 
Um, all right, I'm going to excuse Monica and her daughter now so I can talk to the father uh, in this, Monica's ex-husband, Cliff. There's a protection order in place. The three cannot be in any kind of contact, even through me or on the phone or whatever, uh, regarding Cliff and his ex-wife. I'm going to talk to him when we come back, and then we'll come up with a plan here. We'll be right back. You piss me off. You piss me off so much that I can't even be in the same house as you. Uh, what would make a 13-year-old hate her mother so much that she refuses to live with her? Well, uh, people have different points of view and opinions. I'm going to ask her father, Cliff, uh, that very question. What do you have to add to the understanding here about uh, what I might be able to use to help your daughter? So, in, in, in my opinion, um, Monica plays the victim very well. Yes, is there, is there a restraining order? Absolutely. Now, do you know the circumstances behind that? I don't think you do, and uh, Monica probably won't tell you this, but um, she tried to break down my door to my apartment, and I called the cops. They came out. Um, they were going to arrest her, and I didn't want that when we were separated, and I called her over and over and over and over, and I got charged with phone harassment, which is under domestic violence. We had, we had uh, uh, joint custody of the kids, and she was talking to the kids about stuff, and I defended myself and got them involved in adult issues, told them that their mom was a liar, and I got in trouble for that, and I paid, and we started doing supervised visits. The judge ordered supervised visits, and she said, if the kids are asking to do supervised visits outside, uh, do, do stuff outside of the supervised visits, and both parties agree to go ahead and do it. Well, the kids were asking, McKay in specific was asking to do things outside of those supervised visits. She wanted to go to lunch, she wanted to go fishing, she wanted to go camping. And each week I sent emails to Monica saying, hey, McKay is asking to do this. And the judge says it's okay if we both agree. And she wouldn't agree. After that fourth week is when McKay started throwing fits and, and doing this. And so... The supervised visits um, changed when Monica got a therapist to write a letter that said that Makaya and Bo needed therapeutic visits. Well, mysteriously, that therapist was no longer used after that order was changed to therapeutic visits. So every time we made progress, something happened, a letter from a therapist, or uh, Monica would contact the the therapist and say, hey, Cliff was telling the kids that underage drinking is okay. We need to stop these visits. And they would believe her. Can I, can I jump in here a second? Absolutely. Um, is there anything that you can share with me that would help me help your daughter find some peace? You know, if Monica isn't helped, Micaiah won't get helped. If I'm not helped, McKay won't get help. Okay, let me, let me rephrase the question. Uh, is there anything you can tell me that would help me help your daughter find some peace? I can't, I'm really not here to try to improve your relationship with Monica. I don't think you want to reconcile with her or she with you. What I'm interested in is if there's anything you can share with me that I can use to help your daughter find some peace in her life. Yeah, if she, if she has a father, she's been begging for a father, and if um, outside influences can stop sabotaging the progress with that, that's what can help. What is your opinion of why Micaia is so violently angry? My opinion is she feels that Monica is keeping her from her father. She has said it many times that she wants to be with me, and Monica does anything and everything to prevent it. Okay, so you think if she was with you, that the anger would resolve? I'm, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm thinking that if she could spend time with me, not necessarily be with me full time, I don't want to take her from her mom. I want to enhance her life and get that anger out of her. And if she can spend time with her father, she can have both parents in her life, which she needs both parents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult to co-parent with you and Monica 
having so much anger and angst that is obviously very raw between the two of you? Um, she's never been willing to co-parent, even when, when, even when the, the anger wasn't there. She's always been controlling and manipulating and wants to make all the decisions. She right. was always that way. All right, gotcha. All right, Cliff, I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. You'll be able to continue listening as we wrap things up here. Uh, next, is there any way for McKay and Monica to call the truce? I'm going to bring them back out. I'm going to tell them what I think needs to happen here after the break. I have three other children. McKay's behavior is very difficult with the other kids. They wished Mikaya would go live someplace else. My daughter, Kylie's very mad at Mikaya for what she's doing. She's hurtful to my brothers. She just wants to feel like everything revolves around her. I'm really mad at her. It's very scary for all of the kids. Okay, well, there's another sister involved here, and that's Kylie, right? Yes. Your sister, Kylie. What's the truth here? And I, I hate to put you on the spot, but all I'm trying to do is help this family. And I can't do it if I don't know the truth. My mom's a very loving mom, and she's trying to help Micaiah. She's trying as hard as she can. She just wants the best for her, and she doesn't know why she feels angry. And when she's punching walls and re is refusing to get my mom's help, she doesn't know what to do. How do you get along with your sister? We get along most of the time, but as soon as something makes her angry or upset, then she just goes off and then we lose that connection. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard your mother say to her numerous times, I'm sorry I ever had you, I wish I'd gotten an abortion? Any no, of that? I've never heard her say that. This is not a Micaiah problem. It's not like you're the bad seed here, you're the bad kid, you're the one that's the screw up, and if we could just get you fixed, this family would be fine. Why are you, why are you shaking your head? Because it's not just then, your then why do I feel like that? When I'm over here getting therapy, nobody else is doing therapy, it's all just me. You're all just playing the game. I'm actually over here working. I was working with Tanya, I was working with everybody, Mom. I was working so hard to get to a place where I could control my anger and let it out in a positive way. That's why I was punching my walls instead of cutting and instead of taking it out on you. So if you had a choice, me cutting myself or me punching holes in my wall, which would you pick? The holes in the wall, I guess? Exactly. You're not the first angry young girl that I have talked to. Um, I, I get that you're really upset right now. And frankly, I don't look at you and ask myself why you're upset, angry, cutting, knocking holes in walls, running away, medicating yourself with drugs or alcohol. I really ask myself, why not? The behavior really went off the rails about the time you and your husband started having a lot of trouble and you wound up getting a separation and a divorce. Mm -hmm. You know, for every action in this world, there's a reaction. And I think when that family started falling apart and everybody started choosing up sides and everything got hostile, you kind of got marginalized. You kind of got pushed over to the side here. He said, well, okay, so I'll make my own way. But it's not you. It's this whole family. I totally get that. Are you willing to go home stop doing alcohol, stop smoking dope, and live harmoniously with your mother in your home? No. I think if I'm over here looking at you from her point of view, I don't see a soft place to fall at all. Right. You've withdrawn emotion here to a degree, have you not? Yes, yeah, the learned behavior, and I have, absolutely. You're going to have to get over this hostility with your husband. I, I don't know, you know, I, I've got some information about why, why y'all got a divorce. It's still very raw. You, you take great pleasure in dogging on him, and he takes great pleasure in dogging on you, in my opinion. I ask him, you know, what can I do to help your daughter? What can you tell me that would help me help your daughter? And he spent 75% of the time 
telling me uh, what a saboteur you are. You two need to get this resolved, and I'm willing to get you some help with that, very specialized help with that, and I'm willing to offer you some very specialized help as well. But there is no point in her doing the things she needs to do if this family doesn't do what it needs to do, because you can take her off and get her happy in a vacuum over here, off by herself, and she comes back into this toxic environment, it's going to be the same way it was before she left. There is no point in helping her if you people don't change your game. Mm -hmm. No point in it. No point in it. She didn't choose any of this. The adults in this situation chose that, and she got caught in the crossfire. So what do you think about what I'm saying? I think that's 100% correct. Thank you. Um, I don't want you. I don't want you to go home. This is Matt Polachek right here. Matt, raise your hand. This is Matt Polachek here. He's from a place out here in California called the Center for Discovery. Um, it's down in Whittier. And I want to introduce you guys to Matt and let you talk backstage. But going home with her to me is not an option fair enough mm -hmm. all right <laughs> these days it seems like so many young girls are struggling like Micaiah well there are other options next I have a big announcement about my wife Robin and how she's helping girls all over America become confident empowered and strong young women we'll be right back my wife Robin who has been working incredibly hard on her foundation when Georgia smiled the Robin McGraw Revelation Foundation it's been such an incredible year since launching the foundation and we have been so busy we're helping shelters providing legal services to women and children and doing all we can to improve the lives of those affected by domestic violence so they can live safe healthy and joy-filled lives and that's just the beginning well it's just the beginning because i have some big news uh but first we're going to invite someone very special to join us please welcome the ceo of girl scouts of the usa anna maria chavez <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Good, Good to see you. Now, the reason I've asked Anna to join us is because she is involved with some big plans with Robin's Foundation. I love this woman and everything Girl Scouts stand for. They help build girls of courage, confidence, and character. And who wouldn't want all of those qualities? And today I get to play the role of proud husband because I've been given the honor of sharing some huge news. Are you ready? Okay. I am thrilled to announce that my wife, Robin McGraw, has just been named the celebrity spokeswoman for Girl Scouts of the USA. Now, this is so in her wheelhouse because Girl Scouts have been instrumental in shaping girls into success stories. Did you know that almost every female astronaut was a Girl Scout? Some right. of the biggest celebrities were Girl Scouts, too. For example, Dakota Fanning, I love her, Taylor Swift, Gwyneth Paltrow, Venus Williams, and Michelle Obama. How about that? excited to have her support and the support of her amazing foundation when Georgia smiled because they promised to help us with our major campaign called to get her there it is the largest fundraising campaign for girls leadership in the history of the United States so thank you for your support thank you so this means to me. I was actually a Girl Scout growing up my entire life and I have to tell you I was a brownie leader 
before we ever even had children. Of course, we never had a daughter, but... Seriously, <laughs> we're married for like months, and I come home and she says, I got a brownie troop. I <laughs> so, I we don't have a daughter! I, did, I know! I, did, I called the Girl Scout Council when we were first married. I said, yes, I'd like to volunteer. I want to volunteer to be a brownie leader. And they said, great, great. What school does your daughter go to? I said, well, I actually don't have a daughter. I have no children, newlywed, but I still want to volunteer. And they said, wow, this is a first. But I got myself a brownie troop, and it was so much fun. They were just adorable, adorable. I made one mistake. I read the, the uh, uh, newsletter out loud to them before I really scanned it. And <laughs> I said, oh, girls, we're going to have a camp out, citywide camp out. They got all excited. And then I went, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We're not eligible. <laughs> First year brownies. Of course, they're all crying. They all start crying. I'm like, oh, what have I done? We'll have a camp out in my backyard. <laughs> and we did. And they loved it. I'm so Robin, we have a big surprise for you. We received some video messages uh -huh. from your biggest Girl Scout fans. Here's what uh -huh. they had to say. Hi, Robin. Some people think Girl Scouts is for the younger girls, but I'm a junior in high school, and I'm still a Girl Scout. I love how you support young women to become strong, healthy, and help others. Hi, Robin. I am 13 and love how you care about how Girl Scouts believe we can be and do anything by standing up for ourselves and having strong values. The issues of violence and abuse are very close to my heart. It is encouraging to me when persons such as Robin create programs that can help prevent abuse. She is an inspiration to me and to so many others. I was watching when Robin said, if you allow other people to erode your good opinion of yourself, you're giving them power over you. It helped me to believe in myself. The only opinion that matters is yours. both to say that. Well, the Girl Scouts of the USA is collaborating with When Georgia Smiled, which is an amazing foundation, and they're going to help us enable girls across the country to reach their potential. You know, Girl Scouts has been around for 102 years. We've provided after-school programming for girls to allow them to become the leaders they want to be in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's about creating new memories with them. It's about enlightening them and educating them so they can place a major, major focus on not only on their lives, but how they can change lives in their local communities. To help transform as many girls' lives as possible, my foundation, When Georgia Smiled, is joining forces with Girl Scouts of USA's to get her their fundraising campaign to do just that. We all must be diligent and passionate in our support for girls, and it begins today. Uh, we'll tell you how you can help girls across the country when we come back. Well, I am here with my wife, Robin, and CEO, Ana Maria Chavez. We've just announced that Robin is the celebrity spokesperson for Girl Scouts of the USA. We have over 3 million girl and adult members in every U.S. zip code, and we're in over 90 countries in the world. But we also have 30,000 girls on wait lists nationwide who want to join, but cannot because we have a shortage of volunteers. I mentioned earlier that we need your help to ensure that every girl in every zip code has an opportunity to become a Girl Scout. Go to girlscouts.org slash join for more information. If you want to support Girl Scouts, you can also go to Robin's website, whengeorgiasmile.org. All contributions will go directly to the Girl Scouts of the USA to invest in girls so they can change the world. Of course, the Girl Scouts didn't come empty-handed. I mean, who doesn't love their cookies? <laughs> I know I do. My favorite is, of course, the Thin Mints. I have a box of Girl Scout cookies for everyone in the audience. guest and a special thanks to Ana Maria Chavez and congratulations to you Robin I am so proud of you we'll see you next time thanks so much thanks guys
Dr. Mika. Hello. I'm Anthony. Nice I'm the you. resource director here at the show. This is Dr. Matt Polachek. Do you have a chance to think about it? It's better than going home. That's damn right. Let's get moving. Dr. Phil said some pretty inspiring things. It made me happy that he actually told my mom that's not all my fault. I think that's great, and I think it's definitely a start. We're moving in the right direction. Dr. Phil, thank you for everything that you've done for me. You've helped me a lot.